Evelyn. I think that X will be happy to hear that. And then from Berjaya Dragons, we had Lee Sin and Gragas. So pretty uh, sensible bands, in my opinion. What do you say? Yeah, no, I think they are pretty standard bands. I would, if I was going to pick four bands for the current meta, um, I would definitely be picking things along the lines of Evelyn, Leeson, and Gragas, and then obviously the last one, Braum, super strong level one, and we've seen teams be really aggressive in the early game. Braum is especially good at playing off level one aggression, so I think that uh, they, they are pretty solid bands overall, and actually we, we're sort of seeing the end of the draft phase here, um, and we're starting to see these compositions round out. Yeah, and I'm really liking this Lulu pick. Lulu was pretty dominant yesterday, so then continuing to see her picked should be pretty powerful in this game <clears throat> indeed. Looking at that Lulu uh, Wukong combination, jumping in with the ultimate and mm -hmm, providing the wild mm -hmm. growth, and just lots of just you know, big damage coming out. Feels good. Feels good. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a really really strong combo. The uh, the Lulu uh, Wu Kong very similar to the Lulu Shivani. You've got a way of getting into the fight, and then getting the huge uh, explosion and health and the knock up on the enemy team. Com combining that with uh, the Aurelian Soul, great team fight presence as well. Uh, the only the one qualm that I do have is there's quite a lot of scaling again for um, for Bajaya Dragons. So again, you know, there the may be early game uh, discrepancies that you're not going to get a hold of here. You have a Camille that you've got to contend with. You've got a Misfortune who's incredibly strong in the early game too. However, with a Vi, you know, you might be waiting until level 5 to, before you see any major action taking up place because, you know, Vi is one of those junglers that uses her ultimate mostly to, to get into the fight. And actually, I think both of these team fights look relatively strong. The one thing that I would say for Aliab is that they have a 1-3-1 one, one here as well. They've got the ability to play um, Camille and Twisted Fate pushing down the side lanes. Um, so I think keep an eye on, on the tactics that are used this game because we we may see a, a move away from traditional team fights, especially for Liab, because if they get behind that, their, their team doesn't really do that well in a team fight situation. They're more of an individual pick team, um, as well as like maybe pushing pushing the side lanes and exploiting side lane pressure. So that's what I'll be be looking for for Liab. Well, you talk about the potential early game pressure coming out from Burjaya. Oh. Uh, We're just waiting for Dave. Dave's uh, Dave's point of view has just gone down here, so we'll have to wait to see if it comes back relatively quickly. Can the audience hear me is the question, hopefully. Uh, we have a little bit of technical issues right here uh, from the stream. Let's hope hope we fix it fixed right away. Um, Drew and video <clears> call. The joys of, uh, the joys of spectator, spectatorless... Uh, <laughs> Wild Rift. <laughs> yes, it's uh, we're having a little bit of issues by watching the Liev's perspective, and then uh, so far it's been pretty peaceful, thank God. Um, but let me see. Uh, All right, well, I have I'm looking at their stream right now on my yeah. <clears throat> own side. Uh, right now I am at one minute eight seconds. Looking at Liev's stream, checking out Gambas here along with Miggy on the Janna. Could you link? Could you link that to me in the in the chat? That would be fantastic if you could. I I think it actually is in the chat from. Uh, is it? Let me have a look. Yeah, in the the the, oh, uh, the other one. The other one. Yeah, Let me go exactly. ahead and do that. This is Liab's perspective. <coughs> and by the way, you can go to Trouble and watch individual player perspective. They're all streaming on Trouble right now, um, live. As we're having some technical issues, and so sorry about the technical issues because we are um, limited by the technology we have. The Spectator mode is not available. Mm -hmm. So um, once again, sorry about that. All right, I'm uh, watching um, Liab's perspective. Yeah. All right, one fifty-two, so, one fifty-three, one fifty-four. That's where I'm at in the game. Okay, I'm about one second ahead of you. So, uh, well, I'll just try to tell the future then. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, hopefully the audience can hear us. We're yeah, taking a look at the stream. Here. All right, awesome. So we're taking a look at the stream on our side. Taking a look at Liab's uh, point of view here. And we have obviously the uh, Kaisa and the Lulu on the side of Brajaya going off against the <clears throat> Misfortune and the Janna. Looks like we already have a two kill lead here for Liab. So going, getting off that early advantage is pretty huge. Not quite sure who did fall, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, you guys in the chat probably were able to pick that up. But uh, this is going pretty standardly. <laughs> if that's a word here, in the uh, dragon side lane with both sides just kind of poking each other. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a lane matchup that, honestly, you're not expecting a huge amount of action to happen. Like, at the end of the day, it's it's 
it's Jan and Misfortune. You've got a lot of uh, a lot of damage output, but also versus a Lulu, you're never going to be able to get close enough to really punish that and push the advantage. It looks like there's a, a Twisted Fate run to the top side of the map here onto the Akali. I actually really like Twisted Fate into Akali because one of Akali's main functions in a team fight is that ability to hide in the shroud. But you know, if a Twisted Fate is switched on, just pop the ultimate. Akali gets revealed in her shroud and she's easy to focus and easy to take down. So I actually quite like the Twisted Fate pick. We have a bit of an engage around the dragon here. It looks like Janna gets caught out slightly, but uh, Gambit able to trade back nicely onto that uh, that Kaiser. And yeah, and I think uh, we've already got a good start here for Liab. They're already 3-0 up. And if they can get their solo laners ahead, D2, what we talked about previously, is that they may they may be able to just completely avoid team fights regardless. They might be able to just go for side lane split push pressure, which would be like an interesting thing because I haven't seen it done too much because in Wild Rift, because the games generally tend to be quite fight focused. Like they tend to be very team fight focused, very kind of like um I, I would say like objective focused, like you know, you're expecting skirmishes all the time. But you know, there is that possibility to go for these kind of like split push win conditions. And a Twisted Fate Camille combo, you can split push in both the side lanes. We could do what we call a 1 3 1 composition. Uh, and I'd be really interested to see if Liab can pull that off. Yeah. And like you mentioned, it's really tough to do that, especially in this sort of situation where kills are so important for that gold. So, you know, making sure that you get those kills while also avoiding those massive team fights. Looks like Misfortune's going to go back over to the Fountain in order to pick up that Guardian's Angel, make her, making it so much more difficult to <clears throat> take down. You were talking about the uh, ability for the Twisted Fate to rotate over to the Akali and make sure to turn off that ability for her, you know, to get away. But there's also the Hextech, the ultimate coming up from Camille as well, so it feels mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Akali is going to have a really hard time there. Yeah, no, there are two champions that do well into Akali overall. Like uh, Camille limits the mobility, and Twisted Fate gives the visibility. Uh, it looks like with this Guardian Angel pickup, it's a strong point for Misfortune to want to fight, uh, and we're going to see them go for this dragon, actually completely uncontested as well. So brilliant start here for Liab, uh, and it just feels like. Uh, I actually respect the decision from um, Dragons to avoid contesting that first Drake because, again, you have that scaling. Like, you have the Kaiser, you have the Aurelian Soul. If you don't feel confident fighting at this point in the game, then there is no need for you to fight. Like, you don't have to. Uh, it looks like they killed Akali again. I feel bad. They are absolutely <laughs> wailing on her. But it um, looks like they might even be able to trade oh. back here. They went for a big roam to the top side of the map. Yeah, they were able to rotate and get two kills for it. Very nicely done by the Wukong. First, catching out the Camille and then being able to take out the uh, Twisted Fate as well. So very nicely done. I believe Aurelian Soul was able to help out <clears throat> with that situation. Um, so, uh, wow, I've lost my train of thought again. Sorry, my, my brain is like turning off this, guys. I know, I, I bet you know how it feels, but... Um, I'm, I'm My brain is, is adult. <laughs> I have about three hours sleep. Uh, but alas, we'll get there. Um, I'm, I'm liking this though. I think it's a good response from from dragons. Like they they rotated to protect their mid lane turret. Like the obvious thing to do when you see that Aurelian Soul roam top is to say, okay, well let's group, let's take mid lane turret, or at least get some plates off, make it easier to take later on. But they uh, they very quickly made that rotation in the bot lane to go for it, and I think they've done a good job of protecting those neutral, those objectives on the map so far. So uh, dragons have responded to the early pressure from Liab, and actually has been uh, pretty impressive. The only thing that I would say is that you know. They're, they are losing out on these neutral objectives, but this is a brilliant play from, from Dragons. They they basically said, okay, we don't really care about Rift Herald because the best thing that you can get from Rift Herald D2 is first tower of the game. Like, the Rift Herald is, oh. is designed to crack open towers, right? So the best thing that you can get is first tower of the game. They were like, okay, bottom side of the map, we're just going to go and take first tower of the game ourselves. And that, may, that kind of invalidates and nullifies the... Uh, the major point of getting the Rift Herald in general, because Rift Herald is designed to crack open that first tower and give you that gold injection. What I would say is that Liab also came back with a counter punch. This is going to be a really good game to break down and analyze. Uh, I think uh, if Dave is going to allow me, I might actually uh, I might actually <laughs> choose this one to do on my channel. But um, it, it basically, you're seeing counter punch after counter punch. Uh, in terms of map rotations. And they were like, okay, we're dropping Rift Herald mid, but we're also going to take the top lane tower, so we actually get two towers out of that Rift Herald take. So it's been really back and forth so far. I'd say that the advantage is ever so slightly lying in, in Liab's favor. But what I would also say is that you are coming up to eight minutes into the game and a Kaiser and Aurelian Soul composition is still active. They're still they're still fighting. They're still on the same wavelength as this Misfortune comp. Um so they still have that really big late game team fight scaling that, that can potentially come online here. And it's not like the Aether Rift games where we saw, uh, you know, a Kaiser 
Aureli and Sol composition get absolutely slapped into the ground within the first two minutes. This time, Lieb are actually relatively even versus that type of composition. So we're going to now have to analyze, okay, do Lieb want to even go for team fights or are they going to do what you're seeing now? Because D2, we talked about it at the start of the game, the 1-3-1 one, one has been activated. Twisted Fate in the top side of the map, Camille and the bot, your side lane split pushes are ready to go and you're leaving Misfortune mid. She has her ultimate for wave clear if she needs it. This is this is the this is what I think Lieb are gonna want to do to try and win the game because it's gonna be very difficult, I think, for um dragons to actually respond to this. Yeah, we had a huge tit for tat, like you were mentioning earlier, just rotations galore, as you saw <clears throat> basically two minutes ago when Misfortune went top, then like I we mentioned earlier, we just had Burjaya Dragon just go straight for the tower rather than going for the secured route with the uh, Rift Herald. And now we're kind of entering a different phase of the game, which you mentioned at the beginning of the game with that 1-3-1 one, one split. And let's see how well Lieb is able to manage this because, again, like you mentioned, we have not really seen this before from teams. It's just really good math play. Uh, looks like they are, again, Ooh. having a little team fight trade here. Yeah, trying to get away is Kai, so it looks like she's going to be able to do so. They pick up the kill onto Camille, and they might get out scot-free. As you can see on the minimap there, the Wukong is able to slither away in the middle of the map. He's pretty high on health, so don't imagine he's going to be able to get caught here. <clears throat> great rotations here from Jaya Dragons doing a great job. Um, it, you know, I was talking earlier about the uh, top tower going down in favor of Liab, but uh, during that time, you know, the... Twisted Fate also fell, and you can see the kill count has completely evened out here. Four to four. Virgia Dragons have also taken the Mountain Dragon, and I just I think they're just straight up in the lead here. I, I think they're definitely uh, they're definitely going to be at least uh, threatening the lead at this point in time. They they get the second dragon, so the neutral objective count is completely even once more. Um, the, the problem that I think Liab are going to have is when you're trying to do this 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 split push game plan. So when you're trying to do this one three one, you you need your Camille to be the one that's facing the Akali because if you let if you let Twisted Fate face the Akali, he's going to lose that lose that one v one duel. Obviously, mm. the best thing you can do is draw Aurelia and Soul away from the team fight situations. Oh, Camille, not sure that's the play. I think she might get out of here though. Yeah, it looks like she's able to jump over that wall. Akali trying to deal her damage. Looks like it's going to be a re-engage coming from Liam. They're out for blood. They're tired of being pushed around these last few minutes here. Looks like an uh, uh, ability goes on to a clone, unfortunately. They're going to go ahead and try to take down Akali and are successful in doing so. All five members down in this bottom lane. As they're going to try to push with the help of this Rift Held, finally unlocking that. Unfortunately, the first uh, <clears throat> Siege Minion does go down, so... They're going to get this tower, but not really sure how much else they're going to be able to get out of this. Yeah, they had. Uh, they just saw Aurelian Sol show himself in the top side of the map, so they were pretty confident pushing a little bit further in this bot lane. But again, the uh, the Rift Herald, the best, the best you can hope from Rift Herald in most scenarios is a single tower. Unless you're really far ahead and you get a great team fight, you can drop it and push down two or potentially even three if you're super lucky. In most games, you're going to find that the Rift Herald gets you one tower. If the Rift Herald gets you a tower, takes it off the map, I would say that that objective has become worth it overall. Um, so yeah, I think that was perfectly fine for them to at least get one tower. They've now opened up the map. The question is, where do they go from here? Do they continue this split push pressure? Do they continue to try and play through the side lanes with their Twisted Fate in one and the Camille in the other? Or are they going to group up and try and play more around more of a team fight, you know, with this Misfortune, who is incredibly strong at this point in time? Uh, are they going to start to threaten the Baron, which is obviously now uh, the, the next, next objective that is really on the cards? There are, there are lots of questions that, that need to be answered here for, uh, for Liab. It looks like they're going to continue to just have the, uh, the Camille do her side lane thing, and they're going to keep the Twisted Fate mid for the time being. Ooh, that was a little bit scary. Wukong tried Ooh. to dive in there. Yeah, um, the flash yeah. having to be forced here out of uh, Twisted Fate as well. You can tell you can tell exactly what you were saying is going on in this game, right? <clears throat> because as you can see, the, the split is on here for Liab, whereas you can see the complete grouping of Virgia. So both sides obviously trying to get two completely different objectives completed here. In the yeah, objectives, two, two, not, not objectives, two objectives and yeah, two different player. game plans, right? Two yeah. different, the two different game plans, right? You know, I think I think one of the things that was good for Twisted Fate there is that he's able to, if there is a one v one that breaks out between Camille and Akali, he's able to respond and and uh, activate himself much more quickly in that side lane than the uh, the Aurelian Sol is able to yeah. do so. So it's all about just finding these these minute opportunities. And if you can get Camille sufficiently ahead of Akali, then you're never going to have to worry about that one v one. Like Camille's just going to win that as the game progresses, and will continue to win that for the rest of the game 
And so that's uh, one thing that you have to be aware of for Liab. Like that, like Camille is the ultimate sp uh, split push side laner. Like she she scales up so well, and she's a one v one monster. If you get her sufficiently ahead of Akali, Akali will never be able to to respond to her well enough. And though I've got to be a little careful as the next dragon spawning in thirty seconds, and Camille almost got caught out by the Wukong. There. Yeah, obviously, we're taking a look at the uh, solo queue perspective of Gambit here. Uh, we don't have the spectator mode yet, so we're using that. So uh, <clears throat> when you hear uh, Excalibur or myself talking about something happening on the map, you don't or and you don't see it on your screen, take a look at that mini map. This is actually good practice for you guys in the audience, making sure to always look at that mini map so you know what's going. It looks like a attempted engage here on to our Vi, but she's able to get away scot-free and the uh, counter engage trying to be held onto this Aurelian soul as well. Just tit for tat going back and forth. Not a whole lot of damage uh, on either side, but it uh, looks like Berjaya is going to go ahead, lick their wounds, go back to base, which allows for a semi-free take here of the Infernal Dragon for the Liab side. <clears throat> and as I say yeah. that, uh, sorry to cut you off here, it looks like the action is continuing to go on. Nope, it looks like Virginia's going to back off. They're not going to take the Baron, and the action ends there. That was a actually really smart play from, from Liab. Basically, they zoned away. So they used the Twisted Fate in the mid lane to zone away the Aurelian Soul. They caught him out a couple of times with the gold card, made it difficult for him to get uh, into the teamfight situation. They saw Akali show herself top. They were like, okay, free dragon, right? We, there's no way that Akali comes down to contest this dragon. She's going to be split pushing. And I think at that point, Bajaya Dragons had said, okay, we're going to give up this dragon, but we're going to threaten Baron. But they sent Twisted Fate bot to split push bot. They know that he can respond with his ultimate straight away. And Liab stayed in that area to contest the Baron or at least threaten that they knew that it was going to happen and there was nothing else that the Bajaya Dragons could get from that situation. So they're just they're just playing the map really well right now, Liab. They're, they're trying to pick apart this game. They're trying to avoid the 5v5 team fights. You may notice that we have seen almost no 5v5 team fights this entire game. And that's because Liab don't doesn't want them to happen. There's no, the Liab do not want 5v5 team fights because they lose them. Although this might be their hand might be forced as the Baron is being threatened, but they they are so aware of like when they are in danger and when they're not, they are not putting themselves in precarious positions in these side lanes. And that's the best way to play the one three one game. They just push those waves and wait for an opportunity to push up, push those waves, make sure they don't get caught out. It's really, really intelligent map play from Liab. It's not dominant like Aether Rift in, was in terms of like pure skirmish heavy like dominance, but it is really intelligent map play. And you can see now uh, Rubik's on the Twisted Fate. He's hanging out in mid lane. Why is he hanging out in mid lane? If Camille gets caught in a 1v1, he ults over immediately, keeps the Akali in vision, and she dies. So just they're, they're always aware of where they need to be and why. And they're just making sure that they're never letting Bajaya Dragons go for a, a pure 5v5 or get a Baron for free. And they just continue to try and exert that side lane pressure. And you can see just the movement of Gambit here, the, the help that his teammates provide him in terms of that vision, right? I, I can tell people in the audience are probably thinking, wait, I, he just pushed all the way up to the uh, level two turret. How did he not die? How did he not get jumped on? But Well, he knew exactly where all the members of the enemy team were because his team was so far forward on the map, just in the jungles and providing that vision. And that allows you to take so much more from your opponent than you normally are able to. Mm. And just just be just completely controlling the game uh, against Berjaya Dragons here. The problems that uh, I think Berjaya Dragons have is that the only way for them to engage a fight is through Wukong, like the the only person, or through like a big Aurelian Soul Stun. So like they need Wukong to either dive in. Uh, and just force something. But right now, there is so much protection, especially in the mid lane, that, that you can see the power of having the mid lane tier one left alive at this stage in the game. Like, you have to essentially tower dive if you want to force something. They're going to catch mm -hmm. out Aurelian Soul here, find a pick. Aurelian Soul on a side lane is Oof. such a weak... Like, he, he's not supposed to be a side lane in D2. Like, Aurelian Soul is a teamfight champion. Like, he's there to just be like a monster in a teamfight situation. Um, and now yeah. what they're going to do is they're going to keep they're going to keep Camille split pushing, and they're going to force Bajaya Dragons to respond. They say, "Okay, come and th come and three v four us at Baron, or or you lose your, or you know, or you're going to lose your side lane." And and they think they're, they're going to play it safe here. Yeah, yeah, they're going to play it safe here. They they don't want to take the fight, but um, you know, they they I think they just allowed Camille to get a, a side lane uh, tower as well. 
You can totally see the frustration coming up from Virgaya, though. It seems like they... Oh, and hold that. I thought it looks like they're a potential engage here. But yeah, they tried to have Aurelian Soul match the Twisted Fate because he can use his third ability to just fly over the map. But as you mentioned, it turns out he's just not very good in that position, and he got immediately caught out here. It's just so amazing to see a game like this where a team is just exploiting the 1-3-1 so very well. And, you know, it was a little bit of growing pains in the beginning of the game where they had trouble, ex uh, you know, do executing this strategy but as it's gained strength as they've been able to kind of push this advantage you can see how frustrating it must be for Bajaya dragons well Bajaya dragons have just said screw it we're going to go for the elder dragon we're going to force a 5v5 team fight right now so this is where we're going to see if uh, Liab have gained a sufficient advantage because they're going to have to fight Bajaya dragons on their own territory yeah, exactly. The dragon is at one third health, and here comes Liab trying to make it happen. Big ult comes out from this misfortune and massive damage onto the side of Brajaya Dragon. So many members extremely low. So basically, perma stunned here onto the misfortune, and it looks like it's going terribly for Liab. And she does get. Oh, it looks. Oh, it looks like it wasn't a kill. Actually, she has to use her stasis just to stay alive for one more moment. But she does go down. Vi is trying to back here. She gets caught out. So too does Camille. Can she get out of here? Seems like. It might be the case, but that's going to be a three for one in the end. And that's exactly why Burjaya, excuse me, the Liab side was trying to avoid this fight for so stole long. It. Oh, man. What? Stole it, D2. Oh, my, okay. oh, my You're God. Actually oh. You're actually ahead of me. Oh, my God. Sorry, my, oh, my mistake. Sorry, I did not see that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that till two seconds later. I'm like, what? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's the worst case scenario for Bajaya Dragons. That is the worst case scenario. Oh, they get Barren, right? right? They're going to get Barren, <laughs> but... Actually, I think oh. with Trovo, you can pause for a couple seconds and it doesn't... Uh, I'll you can pause, come back yeah, to I'll, it. I'll pause, I'll, I'll pause for two <laughs> seconds just to bring it back. You tell me what time you're at right now. They just got the Baron. Yeah, the enemy team, that being... Uh, Burjaya actually got the uh, Baron, so that's very, very good for them. I'm at 19, 24, 25, 26... 27 uh, on the game clock there, but looks like so the the Baron was taken here by uh, Burjaya. However, the this is, they just completely fell apart after that. Four members die, and it looks like Liab's going to be pushing on to this mid inhibitor turret. Uh, and Vi has just come back to life as well. Can they make this happen? It out comes the ult for the misfortune just to get onto the nexus as quickly as possible. The next is is falling. It's at half health. It's at the quarter health, and that is just game for Liab. I was not expecting the game to end that way. No, I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. You saw what happened when Liab engaged in a 5v5 with Bajaya. They got obliterated. Like, it wasn't even close, the team fight. Like, they got absolutely torn apart because their composition is not designed to team fight. Um, I think Bajaya made the correct call. They were like, look, let's stop messing around with this side lane split push stuff. We can't we can't compete. Like, our, our composition is not designed to do a 1-3-1. So let's just go force a 5v5 at Dragon. And you saw them at the Elder. They absolutely tore them apart. If Vi hadn't stolen... The Elder Dragon, we could have been looking at a different game. Yeah. This, I think this game was single.